Greetings, Inquisitors. Welcome to the Holocron. This is the week 136 update for the Darth Loquiter account. I go through this account's progress every week, talk about the character upgrades, ships, mods, datacrons, all the stuff that I'm doing in the account. Try to give a little information and lesson, what I'm doing, what I'm learning from the account so that you guys can uh, learn from it too. Remember, as we get started, if you could hit that like button, I would certainly appreciate it. It helps me and it helps the channel. And you have a like saber to get it done. So please hook that up. All right, so my relic target for the week was Grief Karga. Uh, I want to build Grief Karga to relic for the Lord Vader counter team with Fennec Shand. I had several people tell me that you don't really need to relic this Grief Karga. You can leave him at gear 12 and the counter still works. But when I was looking at the mod timing, I really can't see myself getting to, <laughs> so to that high of speeds with this character uh, without taking him to relic. So finding another 20 speed without taking him to relic level really just didn't seem like it was in the cards for me. So I felt like I have to relic him. I'll put him at relic five. That's a pretty standard level. That also opens it up for me to use good datacrons and be able to take advantage of those. So, uh, so yeah, we did indeed take grief Karga to relic five in order to have all the characters on that Lord Vader team that I want to build at relic. Get a gear tier hunt Greedo. Uh, really though, after that, kind of uh, out of luck on a lot of these other clicks. So just the way the week turned out, really not a lot else to do. <laughs> One click on Greedo. There I went to the stun gun package and said, look, like, what do I have to do here? Who's the very best character that needs a stun gun right now? And I landed on, uh, an Iden there because uh, I do want to get her to gear 12. So we go ahead and commit some gear to Iden. Here we build the tie dagger, get this out to five stars. Didn't go crazy on it, but uh, still got five stars worth of it. You know, put a few skills on it. I don't have that uh, trooper built up yet either, so it's not really a urgent thing for me right now. Working on mods, we got a ton of gray mods with five speed. So we're gonna get in there, see if we can get any successes. Uh, here's one, no success. Here's two, we miss. And the third one, we miss. Fourth one, we miss. The fifth one, and we get three speed. It's enough for me to wanna take another poke at it, but then we miss, we get eight speed mod out of it. Here I took a chance and got 11 speed mod, but then on the click to purple, we stuck on 11 speed. I did try taking that one to gold. I usually wouldn't, but uh, yeah, no, no luck. Feeling a little bit desperate here. Uh, just kind of not getting any of these mods to work out. Here we get a nine speed mod. I'm willing to go to blue. Um, we miss on the roll to purple, so I'm gonna stop there. And uh, here we're down to four speed mods now. Got a couple four speed mods that I think are worth poking at. This one turns into a seven speed mod and uh, I'm not willing to keep working on that. So really uh, with, with all those potential mods that were grazed with five speed, we really kind of got skunked this week. Here we got an arrow that uh, has three rolls on 14 speed with a health main stat. That could be useful for some characters. I poke at it a couple times, take it to six dots, but uh, it's not going anywhere. I, I got enough Datacron currency to finish out a couple of these level seven Datacrons to level eight, try to get some more good stats on them. Here I have to take Bosk to Relic seven. If we're gonna build that Fennec team to counter Lord Vader, we need Bosk at Relic seven at least, probably Relic eight, maybe even Relic nine for better uh, Vaders with the Maul in them. So some pretty high Relic requirements here, but for now I'm just gonna take him to seven to get the team up and running. Working on mods for all these characters and this is sped up you know, a billion times right now because it really took me a long time, and I was stealing mods off of Shock T, General Veers, Lando, Sith Eternal Emperor, Ark Trooper, Jin Erso, Kira, uh, even Jedi Master Kenobi lost mods. So uh, yeah, we really, <laughs> we really went all in trying to mod this 
Lord Vader team. So let me show you what we ended up with here. 26 speed, 24 speed, 20 speed, 24, uh, eight speed uh, triangle on Fennec. That's the best I could get that still worked out. So 283 speed on Fennec. And then her uh, special offense uh, came out at 10, 10, 7, 10, 8. Uh, if I get her to Relic 8, that'll be about 12,000 with that mod set, so I'm satisfied there. Grief Karga, two 23s, a 25, an 18, a 20 speed triangle, and then 30 speed. And I didn't really want the crit damage triangle on Grief, but that's, I, I was just, there were so few mods for me to choose from that. Uh, that's where he ended up. So he's 328 speed, and I still feel like that's a little slow. I was really targeting getting him over 330, but I couldn't really do it. Uh, 21 speed here. We didn't spend uh, as much time trying to get the Mandalorian fast. This is the uh, the old school Mandalorian. So we got some decent mods in him, ended up at 270 speed with 7200 offense. I did use an offense set on him, and maybe I just should have used the speed set and, and uh, just gone for speed. Bosk here, we really went all in on Bosk. 26, 27, 23 speed mods, 26 speed protection triangle, uh, 30 speed on the arrow, total of 341 speed. And if we can get a six dot arrow on him, he'll be at 343. And again, uh, against some teams and against the Lord Vader team, you, you want this boss to get that taunt up before the other characters in the team start going. Moving on to the Beskar Armor Mando. Uh, again, I wasn't quite as concerned. I was trying to get as much offense as I could, but then again, trying to get enough speed on him to go where he needed to go for the crate raid. Uh, we ended up with this kind of 270 speed uh, version of him with some offense, but really kind of bad mods. And then we had to put the uh, the Zeta onto Grief Karga, sweeten the deal. And unfortunately, I didn't get the capture of that click actually going off. There was a, a problem with my, uh, with my uh, stuff. So here, th this is the first time I tried to battle Lord Vader. And uh, it didn't go really like I expected. We managed to work our way through to a victory here. So we, we got a win in our very first attempt, but that's where I realized that I didn't actually have the, uh, the uh, Zeta on Grief Karga. So here we take on a much tougher version of the Lord Vader team. This one has Maul and uh, Thrawn. Thrawn instantly fractures Fennec and we end up in a situation where we get that early kill off on the Red Trooper. Beskar Mando is doing a good job trying to keep people alive. But uh, with the fracture on Fennec, we're, this, this counter is just going nowhere. So our boss wasn't fast enough to outrun their Thrawn, and that pretty much uh, doomed the run to failure. So it looks like we either... Uh, you know, we still have the more work to do on, on Bosk's mods. Uh, 341 apparently isn't fast enough for a Bosk. Or, you know, we just have to say, it, if the Lord Vader team has a, a Thrawn that's going to go faster than our Bosk, maybe we're, just, maybe we're just out of luck. So even if that were the case, the Fracture would have gone on to Bosk, and then Maul would have been free to kill whoever he wanted to in the team. So I think... Uh, that's, that's still going to be a challenge for us no matter what. All right. Anyway, some initial success, but we'll have to see where it goes. Week 136, we're at 6.4 million galactic power, 76 relics, 95 Zetas, 12 Omicrons. JMK is still our arena team getting us top 50, uh, but we've dropped down to like 274 for right now because we're practicing with our... Jedi Knight Luke team against SLKRs, and we're practicing against Lord Vader's with our Fennec team. So we're going to stay down low in squad arena using that uh, time to practice. In fleet, we're still getting top five with Profundity. Grand Arena, we're in Kyber, uh, Kyber 4. And the project will be to get uh, Bush Leia done in week 137. Farming plan for next week, exact same thing, really no changes. Uh, the 200, uh, 2023 planning, still 
working on that Lord Vader counter. I feel like I do need to put the Relic 8 on Fennec for more damage. Probably need to Relic 8 Bosk for, you know, more durability. Maybe even Relic 9 uh, Bosk if we get to the point where it's good enough to start countering some of the, um, the better Lord Vader teams with Maul in them. But uh, we'll make that commitment over time. We're not in a hurry to do that. We've got the team started. We'll build it up as we go. From here, we're going straight into Jabba. No more messing around with anything else. we got to finish out the slug himself. And then I have to figure things out, right? There's so much stuff that I want to do after we get done with Jabba. I want more crate participation, so... You know, working on uh, Embo or whatever I need for Jabba, working on other characters for the crate raid. Uh, so more Jabba, more crate, figure that out. Uh, Sonastaros could be an interesting relic. Afra, uh, I'm working on Triple Zero and BT1 for, for an Afra team somewhere in there. Jedi Master Luke seems like uh, the next GL journey because we got Jedi Knight Luke from the Jabba journey and all that. Star Killer, you know, we've got the Dash Rendar done. We've got Mara Jade in good shape. We'd have to finish out a couple more characters there, but uh, Star Killer, you know, could potentially be on the menu. For getting another uh, non GL uh, counter for Grand Arena as well as other things. So there's a lot of stuff that, that I, I might want to do. The, the key that I have to do is, is try to figure out. What's really going to be the very best thing among all my options? So, still got some time to sort that out. It'll be a couple more months before I get Jabba. When I was modding this Fennec team, uh, I had to steal mods from my two Galactic Legends just to even make it work. Uh, it, you know, Kenobi got some downgraded mods. Sith Eternal got downgraded mods. I had to take mods off of 501st. Um, good teams with good characters that had some of my, not even the best mods, but, but I'm getting to the point where if I don't want to be changing mods all the time, I just had to downgrade those teams. So that made me kind of want to go back and look at my mod score. And yep, the top 110 is still 10.4. Uh, the Omega mod score is still, you know, seven and a half, so, uh, working on having an eight mod score. So it's not bad. You can see my huge spike there. I always laugh when I look at this graph because I have this huge spike at 10 and 11 speed because mods that have 10 and 11 speed that get to purple, I won't keep slicing them. So I've got this huge buildup <laughs> of mods at 10 and 11 speed. I think it's pretty funny. Anyway, so yeah, 9, 10, and 11 speed, everything gets stuck there. But, uh, but yeah, so I, I do have good mods, but man, I, I really feel like I've run out. So, yeah, to get, because remember, I just did the Jedi Knight Luke team to counter SLKRs, and that took a bunch of good mods on that team. Um, now the Fennec team, I still have to keep the crate team at, you know, well modded to get good participation in the crate raid, so those Mandos have to have good mods. Um, and I still have CLS team and troopers team and other stuff like that that I want to have good mods. But, uh, but yeah, I've just, I, I've run out of enough mods to be able to take uh, all of these teams to the level that I need them at for, for what I'm doing in the game right now. So for Loquitur, I really don't want to have to swap these mods before GAC, put them back on for PVE stuff. Uh, it is time consuming and expensive. And by the time I get to Jabba, if I really want to have two, uh, two crate teams with good participation, I'm going to need good mods on the Jabba team and also good mods on the, the off crate team. And I, I took a look at it just trying to kind of calculate where I'm at now with all the teams that I want and, and, and adding these uh, another set of mods for the Jabba team as I finish that out. I'm looking at about 20 more mods. At, I call them top-notch mods, right? So 20 plus speed with some kind of potency on them for the crate raid. Um, that that's I, if I if I got that within a reasonable time frame, uh, I'm looking at stealing mods from troopers, from CLS, from the GL teams that I have. Like I, I just don't have the mods to support that. 
again, I, I can do that, but then I'd be swapping out mods. I'd actually have to rotate mods between one crate team and the other as I'm playing the crate raid. And that's just too much money. It's too expensive. I don't, I don't want to have to spend that many credits. So what I'm thinking, I, I got to the point where I convinced myself that I could not spend crystals on anything else. And I could really just get back to doing 100 cost refreshes on mods. And I did that for a little while. And then I ran out of bronzium wiring. I bought bronzium packs. And uh, I've been doing that. But uh, in, in retrospect, the going faster, getting more relics, hasn't really answered. Uh, I don't think that's really been the answer, right? Because the faster I'm going... The more I build teams that need good mods and the more I'm outrunning my capability to mod those teams, then, uh, uh, so, and, and how much of a bottleneck is a bronzium really? I mean, when I buy those packs, I average probably, I get a lot of 25s and 35s out of that pack. So if I buy four packs, I'm probably getting something like 120 bronzium wiring. And when I think about it in the grand scheme of things, it helps. Every little bit helps. But, uh, you know, that's that's half a relic a month. So I'm not going to do it. I'm, I'm really going to save all of my crystals just for mod refreshes for at least the next month. I'm going to let the bronzium wiring be whatever it's going to be. And whenever I run into a bronzium wiring bottleneck, I'm just going to focus on taking existing characters to higher relics. Because again, relicking something from 7 to 8 and from 8 to 9 doesn't take bronzium wiring. So when I'm in that uh, true bronzium wiring bottleneck, I'll just take a relic 7 character to relic 8. There's about 5 characters in this account that I've already got relic 7 that I want to take to relic 8. The Wampa, you know, just uh, the Dark Trooper. There's a lot of stuff that, that I feel like it would be nice to have at relic 8. So I'll focus my uh, raid currency on um, impulse detectors. I'll focus my purchases on um, being able to uh, get some biddle cards for the token three purchases. So uh, token two purchases. So I'll focus the token two purchases on the Zimbiddle card materials, the token three purchases on the impulse detectors themselves. With this account, luckily I have enough arrow magnifiers from prior uh, sea pit raids that I don't, don't need to also buy arrow magnifiers. Um, but, uh, but I'll do that for the next four weeks. And if I get stopped, just work on higher relics and we'll see how that goes. What does this mean for you? I, I guess I didn't really think this through ahead of time, but these non GL counter teams where you're using off meta teams to kill GLs, um, they really take extremely good mods to be able to pull off counters against teams that have any kind of decent mods. So the, a poorly modded Vader team, um, you saw, even, <laughs> even without the Grief Karga uh, Zeta that's needed to get that team up and running right away, I was still able to pull off that Lord Vader counter against a team with mediocre mods and, and not the best comp. When I went in against the team with good mods and a good comp, I just got destroyed, right? So getting th those teams modded correctly uh, really takes some of your best mods. The crate raid, again, you can go in there with, with pretty mediocre mods, but a lot of the teams that are getting the best scores, you want three, sometimes even four of your characters to go before the crate dragon goes. And uh, once you get up to uh, tier four, tier five in that range, you're, you're looking at having characters uh, 280 speed or higher to get those initial turns before the crate dragon gets to go. Uh, so again, you need a lot of potency for a lot of these characters. You need a lot of speed to go before the crate dragon. Uh, so these, these teams take good mods. If you're not working on mods right now, if you think to yourself, well, I'm doing fine, I've never seen the, you know, the reason that I need good mods, just be aware, even if you don't want to do GAC, even if you're not doing off-meta counter teams, things like that, just the crate rate alone is justification uh, to do um, good modding. 
And the other thing that I came out away with this thinking, it, it, it's interesting. I've always felt like once you build a GL, the GL sort of deserves your best mods. That's your best character. You put your best mods there. Uh, but over the course of the last uh, couple days in remodding this team, I've kind of come to the conclusion that in the mid game, a lot of times the counter is what matters. So if I'm taking a, a certain Galactic Legend in against a certain team to counter it, uh, oftentimes it's just the matchup that, that matters. And I'm going to win with that GL regardless of whether or not they've got great mods. So the interesting thing, maybe if your account doesn't have that many good mods in it, you're actually better off building Galactic Legends because then the, the GL teams themselves uh, can, can still take care of business without having fantastic mods. Uh, for people who have mid-game accounts that are struggling to balance the mods, uh, think about this for yourself. If you have a GL team that's, that would be okay with lesser mods, uh, you know, maybe you could take your foot off the gas on, on one of those teams and use those mods on a crate team. And again, for most mid-game players, you don't want to be swapping mods uh, three or four times a week. It gets really expensive, uh, so you do want to kind of find the, the right homes for your mods so that generally uh, you can leave them there. If you do have one or two characters that you have to swap mods on, that's fine. But swapping out whole teams back and forth uh, consumes all your credits. And in the mid-game, we still need credits to build more characters, so that's not a great formula. So some things to think about. Uh, really, this message coming through stronger than ever on this week's uh, <laughs> account update. Farm your mods. Even even me, I gotta farm more mods. Gotta try to find some opportunities for 100 cost refreshes. Uh, my goal is gonna be, I'm gonna try a new goal and, and maybe this will work out and maybe it won't. But if I can get these extra 100 refreshes, I'm gonna try to get my mod inventory all the way to full. And uh, when my um, mod farming overflows into my inbox, then I will go uh, farm slicing materials for the rest of the week. Uh, so each week I, I'm hoping to be able to go into a, a mod box that's pretty full. Now I do have about 200 to 250 mods in inventory, so I'm not farming a full 500 mods every cycle. But if I could farm like two, 200 to 250 mods every week, and then the rest in slicing materials, um, even if that only gets me one or two more good mods a week, uh, let's say one decent mod a week at least, 15 speed or higher, um, that'll still help me get to critical mass on, on all these teams that need the very best mods. That's my thoughts for this week. Thank you all for watching. Please remember, hit that like button on your way out if you didn't hit it on the way in. Subscribe, use the notification to see more videos like this in the future. And of course, as always, the link to the Discord is in the description of the Holocron down below. Click that. We have a fantastic Discord. A lot of experienced players hanging out that are willing to help and answer questions and, and talk to new players. And a lot of new players answering questions that you probably want to ask too. So if you just come over there, hang out, read what other people are saying, you can already learn a lot. Hope to see you over there. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next Modicron.